Welcome back to another edition of Forecast Lab. A few disturbances along the coastal waters of the U.S. One off of California, another off of Florida, and we've even got a few out there around Alaska. Let's take a look at the world map. There's our 24-hour temperature extremes. Antarctica is always cold, so we're going to always give you the minimum elsewhere outside of Antarctica, and that happens to be minus 40 at Tum Yadi, up there near Tixi, Russia. This is what it looks like on Google Street View. And Fitzroy Crossing, Australia, in northern western Australia, 111. And this is what that area appears to be like. It does seem like just a few weeks ago, some parts of Arizona were not too far from 111, but today, much cooler, looking at mid-70s. We do have a Pacific system working through that part of the country. We can see the thickness gradient right there. That's indicative of a frontal transition zone. Why don't we take a look at a cross-section from Seattle through Nevada down towards northwest Mexico. What are we going to find? Well, here's what we got. Washington, Nevada, Arizona, and Mexico. And I've put some work into these charts. You can see the terrain right there, the Great Basin, the higher elevations up near 800 to 700 millibars. And there's the jet stream right there. That corresponds to 130 knot flow, pretty much right over Arizona right there and the flow tapers off as you go north. And we do see the sloped potential temperature lines. When you have that kind of slope, that does indicate a transition between warmer and colder air. And we do see kind of a dome appearance here marking the colder air and even some much colder air trapped in the valleys right there. Now this looks like an inversion that could correspond to the frontal surface. But there could be another frontal surface up higher. It's not really clear from this. I probably need to go a little bit further down south into Mexico. Here's the sea level pressure and thickness. We do see quite a gradient down here from Southern California down to Baja, California. Another gradient in the Great Lakes region and another gradient in the Gulf Coast area. So that's supporting a couple different fronts across different areas of North America. This occlusion off of California, it looks like it's decoupled from the thermal gradient. So this is in the process of dissipating. However, it does still have some active boundaries still in place, probably mesoscale in nature. And the reason I point that out some very active convection out there off of the central coast of California, the GOES GLM, detecting flashes within those thunderstorms, and they are approaching the coast at this time. There's the radar out of Vandenberg, just now starting to pick up those convective elements. They're still about 110 miles from the radar. Doesn't look all that impressive, but I'm sure if you were out there on a ship, it would be quite spectacular. In the northeastern U.S., we do have an active weather system moving through the eastern Great Lakes, through Ohio and Kentucky. This is all warm air advection, part of the warm conveyor belt, and some convection embedded within that zone of deeper moisture. And then further out to the west, cold advection coming into the backside of that system. And we compare that with the surface chart and you can see we do have a weak low near Ottawa with a cold front extending through Toronto, Cleveland, and down towards Indianapolis. In that warm sector, 60s with dew points around 40 to 50. That's going to be the richer moisture. Looks like a secondary axis east of the Appalachians. And then we've got that warm front right there dividing these near 60s temperatures from 40s further north. And you can see that transitions into an occlusion in northern Quebec. Some very warm temperatures up there near Ungava Bay. Further south in the southeastern U.S., that low which has produced a lot of inclement weather 
a lot of rain flooding conditions down there around Miami has moved on off. The dry sector moving in behind that. And there we see the improved conditions, a fair day around Miami and Fort Lauderdale. Let's take a look at the water vapor imagery. In the south central U.S., we have some fast moving cirrus right there from El Paso to Dallas. At 200 millibars, we're seeing 150 knots from about Clayton down to about Texarkana. This does have the appearance of a subtropical jet, although the pattern is a little bit more complex. This is probably a southern stream system. We take a look at the 500 millibar chart. And there we do see winds of about 30 knots, not very strong. So I think this has characteristics of both a polar front jet and a subtropical jet. If we go back about two days, we did have a ridge axis right through here, which has moved on off to the east. So this is very early in the return flow pattern. You can see the dew points are just now coming up into the 50s and lower 60s. But another front sinking south and a Pacific system coming in from Arizona. In the southwestern U.S., off the California coast, that occlusion continuing to spin, and we mentioned that convective band coming onshore in the next few hours. That's the setup on the surface chart. There are wind advisories in the interior north of Santa Barbara, including parts of Interstate 5, south winds 20 to 30 miles an hour, gusting to 50, and gale warnings are posted on the central California coast for today. In the northwestern U.S., we have had dense fog advisories for this stuff. This is trapped beneath this plateau high that's been sitting across the northwestern U.S. for, I think, one or two days now. So here's where we're at for this afternoon. There's our occlusion off of California, and we get a new Pacific system moving in from the west. That's it right there, approaching during the day tomorrow. So those two are going to join up. Things are going to get active there in the northwestern U.S., picking up that southwesterly gradient. And we are going to see snow in the Cascades above 4,000 feet, possibly up to 12 inches. And winds will gust to 50 miles an hour. Also, a winter weather advisory for this weekend in Stevens Pass. Three to seven inches of snow above 3,500 feet are expected. And, of course, gale watches and warnings along the the Washington and Oregon coast. Heading up into Alaska, yep, stormy once again from Valdez all the way to Yakutat and Juneau. Tight packing of this thermal zone, providing the support for this front, which is west of Ketchikan. Winter storm warnings continue in the Alaskan interior, mostly for this region right there. That's behind these fronts, located from about Fairbanks south to Anchorage. And we've got these northwesterly winds starting to fill in behind, gusting up to 30 miles an hour in some areas. Marine storm warnings are in effect for southern Cook Inlet for today. Winds up to 50 knots with seas of 14 feet, slowly decreasing through tomorrow. Heading east into Canada, a Hudson Bay low and a deeper system moving through Quebec. This is an old occlusion coming in from the south, and as we mentioned, bringing up warm air all the way to Ungava Bay. In the wake of that system, some rather mild westerly flow, mostly originating from the Pacific and the Rockies, so temperatures are in the 30s and 40s, and even approaching 60 degrees around Calgary. Now, a big question is, where is winter? We're having a ridiculously mild fall here in Texas. I've been hearing lawnmowers all day. I mean, it's almost Thanksgiving. We have not had a hard freeze here yet, and I know a lot of the country is like this. This is what the isotherms look like this evening. There we go. So these are all going to be 60s and 70s temperatures, and then we have more in the realm of 30s and 40s up north. You can see they're getting some of that out there in the northern plains. Now the really cold air, the sub-zero conditions, that's indicated by the purple. You can see that's locked up up there in western Canada and the Arctic regions. Does that come south? Well, it looks like we do build up some Arctic air across Yukon and Alaska 
for Tuesday and Wednesday next week, and that spreads into parts of Canada, but the trajectory is mostly taking that into Ontario and Quebec. That does tend to happen a lot. The cold air tends to come east sometimes rather than south, and we do see that sometime after Thanksgiving, some of that cold air does make it into the northern plains. It looks like it's heavily modified. We're barely pushing 40s in Texas and Arkansas. And just a little taste of winter there. The prairie is warming back up into the 30s and 40s, and most of the heavy-duty Arctic air still sitting up north with pressure deficits up there, which means we're not going to get much of that coming south, at least for a while. And the Pacific Storm Track coming right into Alaska like that, so that is kind of broaching some of the Arctic air as well. So let's take a look at the short-term forecast. High pressure across the central U.S., so that's going to drive a little bit of cool air across parts of the Midwest and the Southern Plains. Frontal boundary all the way down towards I-35 and up towards Louisville, Pittsburgh, and Montreal. There's our strong Atlantic system moving up the coast but remaining pretty far offshore. And of course the occlusion, which will join up with the Pacific system off of Oregon and Washington this weekend. And that's how it goes. A new ridge moving into Texas. Mild conditions through that area. A little bit cooler. And then going into Sunday, starting to get some clouds as a piece of that Pacific system moves across the southern Rockies. Heading out into Kansas and Oklahoma for Sunday afternoon. And then into the Midwest region for Monday. And as we go into late Monday, as we return for the supporter show, we're going to have a new push of cool air coming in from the west. That's all cold air advection, the leading edge, this Pacific front right there, down there in Texas, this whole area from Louisiana to Mississippi and up to Illinois. That's a zone of warm air advection, so it will be kind of showery, maybe some fog in some areas north of the warm front, and showers further north where we have upper air support. And that's the very last frame on the NEM run. So we pick that up on the GFS for late Monday. There's our southern U.S. system heading into the eastern U.S. We get this coastal low developing early Wednesday. That's it right there. And a separate system up in the Great Lakes. And you can see that the air behind it, not very cold. In fact, there's another trough right there, more of an Alberta clipper. And high pressure, a ridge from Texas all the way up to Illinois. So very sparse cold air following this coastal system out to the east. So anyway, that clipper will head into the Midwest. There it is right there, pushed by this 1028 millibar high in Alberta. So this is a big chunk of cold air lurking up to the north for late in the week. And gradually it will sag south but not very quickly, so it will undergo some modification as it moves south. There's the new frontal system. Looks like the main one off to the east and the ridging building back in behind, so it could be kind of a cool weekend in parts of the south central U.S. for the 25th and 26th. Anyway, a lot could change between now and then. We'll just check back in on this next week and see how things have evolved. And that's really about all I have to show you for today. Wish we had more going on, but mostly just dealing with coastal systems for this Friday afternoon. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you back here on Friday for the supporters and on Wednesday for everybody else. Hope you can become a supporter if you're not already. By being a Patreon supporter, you will be helping to keep this program going for the foreseeable future. And hopefully at some point, if we get enough support, we can start doing this on more days of the week. All right, we will see you back here next week. Have a good one. Bye-bye.
Thank you.